Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks. It's about efficiency, too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Uh, first and foremost, big shout outs to ABS for having us back once again. Um, they're just always so generous about giving us space to, uh, to when, when we're at ABS, give us space to, uh, to, to talk with our friends. Yeah, uh, I tell you what, out of all the shows, this is one of the ones that uh, I, I look forward to coming to because not only you get to come to Chicago, right, but they really have done a great job of... Cause after the pandemic, when you saw that that first year, and then you compare it to today, I mean, it's it, every year is getting bigger, stronger, better. The people here are great. Uh, it's I one mean, of my favorites, man. Just just from vendors alone, like we were walking the floor today, and just from vendors alone, it seems like there's like three times the amount of vendors. It's like people have really showed up. You know, I I I, I hate to you know we don't talk about it anymore, but but you know back in those days, you know the the, the floor wasn't quite as full. And now this year, it's like, it's like I, I actually got lost on the floor today. You yeah. know? Oh, and, and the main stage is like six times the size that it was. Oh, my goodness. I love how they set it up, though, with, uh, on, you know, a big showroom on either side. So, you, could, yeah. you know, because it felt like the other side, that if you're, if you're if the main stage didn't draw you, you might get lost because it is kind of confusing because it's so large. Yeah, for sure. For, well, we did get lost, yeah. <laughs> you know, trying to find our way around. Hey, another shout out uh, this weekend goes to Schedulicity. Schedulicity is um, is sponsoring the uh, the weekend for us, um, and uh, you know, just a, a big thank you to to Jerry and Missy and and all of our friends over at Schedulicity. Um, you know, we, we we talk about it all the time, and I think Schedulicity uh, they're definitely a company that's the hairdresser first, um, and and they. Uh, just every in all the interactions that we've had over the years, everything has been through the funnel of what's good for the hairdresser. Um, even including like um, during COVID, they uh, they didn't ask for payment for like eight or nine months, which is just name one company out there in the industry that that said we don't want your money. As a matter of fact, during COVID, most of the other companies became hawks, and they became yeah. like, how can we get as much? How can we take as much money um, um, in as possible? And Schedule Z did the opposite. Which you know that's what Jerry does, you know that, or that's what the company does. They just they do the opposite of, of what trends. Yeah, I mean, it, it and it comes from the owner, it comes from the top, right? And Jerry, that's who he is, and you can tell through everybody else in, in the rock star. Everybody in that company has that same kind of this warm, friendly, want to you know. How can we help the hairdresser? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's the most amazing company to um to to uh, to be around and, and and just they just prove it you know i think that they prove it. you know a lot of people say oh we're hairdressers strong but like they prove that their hairdressers strong you know again during I, 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 there's no better example than during the pandemic they didn't take any anybody's money for nine months they showed up 
they showed up. They showed up. That, that's the best way to say it. So once again, thank you, Schedulicity. Um, here's what's cool about doing live events. And what's cool about doing live events is we get to uh, talk to friends or, you know, or if, if they're not your friend before the podcast, they'll be the friend after the podcast. However, our guest today, we've actually been talking to for literally like three years trying to get her on the podcast. And today's the day. All right. I know. Because yeah. you and I, we've talked about it plenty of times. Like, all right, she's just so busy she's like batman she's like yeah. all elusive and stuff yeah um, sometimes people are just hard to get hold of and we're just fortunate and blessed enough to get her down today that's it so let should we get in let's do it. so today our guest is whitney vermer and um she doesn't she she doesn't um uh, live in a bat cave but uh she she she's come up to uh or i guess she does live in a bat cave because we can't seem to find her but uh but she's uh, giving us her presence today is so it vermer or vermeer vermeer, vermeer. Yeah, vermeer? Yeah. did that's i mess it I up thought. yeah vermeer? Right. yeah you know, honestly, people mess it up all the time. So, actually, my last name was it's supposed to be two words, but I put it together to try to make it a little bit easier. Didn't work out so well, did no, it? No, it really does. <laughs> it just doesn't. It, it doesn't. But that's okay. Like in Germany, like like there's a, there's a there's a like a von like a V O N. Yes. Which usually means like some kind of like a like a royal family or some kind of like family with connections. What's the ver? So Vermeer is actually Dutch. So it's funny because we were speaking about Ruzel earlier. Mm -hmm. And so Robin Lane and I always like joke around when we're in Tokyo together that all three of us are Dutch and stuff like that. But I keep meaning to learn the language, but it doesn't sound as cool. So isn't it like supposed to be like one of is it but isn't it isn't what well, doesn't sound as cool when Rob does it? Yeah, but that's very true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't, isn't it um isn't it like one of the hardest languages to learn? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Because I think it's like uh, all those like, all those language. What what? I've just lost my train of thought. But like all the German and all that, it's all kind of like a, a combo of all of that, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I always like have the best of intentions of learning a few words, but I don't know, man. I think the older you get, the harder it is to learn languages and stuff like that. So. I think your care just isn't there as much. Yeah, to be honest. honestly, yeah. <laughs> and then just information overload. It's like yeah. I can only keep so much in there. So that's fair. Yeah, so, yeah. that's fair. So, so wh where are you from? I am actually originally from Iowa, um, but I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota currently. I thought you were going to say like Rotterdam or, you know. No, but I, that'd be a <laughs> lot cooler, but I'm actually from a really small little town in northwest Iowa. And I actually grew up in a house in the middle of nowhere that was like built into a hill and we what? had like horses and stuff like that it was Whoa. pretty much a feral child out in the middle of nowhere in iowa so That's i actually attribute cool. a lot of my creativity to that because there was nothing else to do so i kind of had to make up stuff to do and like i was just always outside like playing and are you an only child um i'm not an only child but i am five five years after my um Second sister. So you're kind of like an only child. Yeah, like for she's sure. Like, mm, I don't know. So you're the baby? Yeah, I'm the baby. Yeah. I'm mm. the baby, but I like to think that I'm the most mature out of the three of us. And <laughs> oh, I'm they're sure they're going to love this <laughs> right now, but, but I think they know it, you know? Yeah, mm. but as the baby, you got, you know, being five years younger, it's like you had uh, three moms and, you yes. know. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But So I had two awesome sisters and... Um, we're all like super close, so that's good. They also helped me raise me, so our family's super close. So, so. how do you find the industry in the middle of nowhere? So it's actually really interesting. Like when I was young, it never ever occurred to me that I would do hair. Not even in high school when I graduated, I didn't know really what I wanted to do when I went to school originally for business and marketing. And I remember sitting in class, and I had like a personal finance class, and the teacher was just so arrogant and aggressive and it like really turned me off and I had thought about myself to myself you know just like I watched my parents like build a business their whole life I've always kind of been surrounded by entrepreneurs and I thought you know honestly like I'm someone who's like better off like learning on the job kind of a situation mm -hmm. so I knew that I wanted to do something like business related, but I just wasn't passionate about like the school aspect of it because I just don't learn well in that environment, like lectures. I'm very much like a visual learner. I like to put my, you know, like I need it to be like tactile. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit like difficult for me, but it was actually like after my first semester of business school, 
my grandma had come up to visit me, and she asked me how school was going, and I was just honest about it and saying that I didn't like it. In fact, I don't know if my parents know this, but I did make doctor's notes at Kinko's and said that I had mono <laughs> so that I wouldn't <laughs> have to go to class For like anymore. a month. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to go to school um, because I just I hated high school because I was growing up in small-town Iowa. Um, I came out when I was... 16 so I didn't even know another gay person so that was like you know lonely in a certain respect so Mm -hmm. um yeah I was up in Sioux Falls South Dakota my grandma came to visit and she asked me how school was going and I just told her I I hate this you know like I hated going to school in high school I don't know why I thought this would be any different um and she just randomly was like how about you go to hair school because she was obsessed with going to hair schools to get services done. Mm-hmm. She loved, like, she loved... She like, just wanted an inside track. Honestly, <laughs> for sure, for sure. That makes sense, honestly. Um, but she was just like, why don't you try hair school? And I just thought to myself, like, okay, like, I'll go check it out. And I remember, like, viewing the school and being, like, really excited about it. But then it was, like, when I got my kit in hair school and I was like, okay, this is for me. You know, and then I actually like, so I went to school in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and we did, I think it was 2,100 hours. So I learned aesthetics and nail as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And then slowly over time, I just started dropping services that I didn't love. Sure. And it wasn't until I moved to Minneapolis and I met uh, my mentor at the time, Kurt Kiefner, um, and he taught me like traditional barbering, classic barbering, and that was the moment that it changed my life because like I loved doing hair and then I felt like kind of bored with it, complacent. I just wasn't getting to do stuff that I was interested in. But once it came down to like this technical, like precision haircutting and having like the design background aspect to it. And um, I don't know, like something about it, it was, I was just immediately hooked and I've been obsessed ever since. Ever since. Yeah. Well, it shows your work is, I mean, if you when you scroll through your Instagram page and I, you know I was doing it before uh, we started this podcast, I'm, and Corey's like, "Your work is sick." I'm like, "Yeah, it's well, really uh, it's it it shows." That means a lot because I I don't post maybe as often as I should, you know, because it's kind of hard when you're just working by yourself. And I I would love to be a little bit more of an influencer because I know that like it's good to do to like support my business, mm-hmm. but. I also like only want to put out work that like I love and I feel good about. I don't want to just put stuff out there to do so, even though I know that that would probably be better for me. Um, it's just really important for me to like qu- control the quality of it in a certain regard. So that means a lot. Thank you. Uh, that's great. I want to take. I want to take. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, the industry <laughs> thanks you. I want to take it back a little bit. I mean, what, what, coming out at sixteen and like in the country or, or where, 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 wherever. How, how was that? Um, it was definitely difficult. I didn't even know another gay person. In fact, like... You know, Daniel Mason Jones has kind of the same, a, a little bit of a similar story. Okay. Where, where he didn't even... He, he grew up... I mean, he grew up in, in, in like a pretty strict religion. So he didn't even... He knew that he was different, but he didn't even know what gay was. That's what it was for me. Like, I always knew that I was different. And I'm from an area where if you mow your lawn on a Sunday, you get a noise ordinance ticket. It's very religious. I went to a public school. We were forced to pray. Like, all of that in my family wasn't religious um, because my parents had different religions. And then they were just kind of like, all right, well, we just won't go. So (laughs) I never went. um, But I always knew that I was different. And it's funny because it actually, like, I was watching MTV, and I think it was, like, Road Rules or something like that was on, and there was, like, a girl on there, and she had a girlfriend, and it was just, it clicked. I was like, that's what it is. That's Mm. what is different about me. And then it took me a long time to be able to, like, say it out loud. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely difficult, (laughs) for sure. you said you came out. So is it 16 when you recognized it, or 16 is when... You started telling people about So I, I always knew that I was different. I think when I was 12, I realized that I was gay. And then um, I probably didn't say it out loud until I was like 14. And then 16, it was kind of more of a, 
getting pulled out <laughs> and then like, oh, okay, well, we're here, so I guess I'll just admit it kind of a thing. Um, and then I actually moved the night of graduation, so I was really ready to get out of the area that I was in um, just because it was I felt it was very, like, unhealthy for me at that time. What, what she's saying is she had some ladies to meet, and they were there were none yes. like that. You know, I, I had I, things I, to do. <laughs> yeah, I had some things I got to catch up on, you know. So, yeah, it was. So what do you mean you were pulled out? Um, it so was did like, you get out it? Yeah, it was definitely, it was really interesting. So my family had a lake house, and we would travel there and stuff on the weekends. And I had, had a journal, and I was so, like, paranoid about my privacy that I would put it under the seat in my car and lock um, the door. And I must have forgotten to lock the door, but it was in our family's garage. And I lived about 20 miles away from the school that I went to. And some people snuck out to my parents' house, went into the garage, went into my car and got my journal and read it. And that's kind of how it all happened. So it was pretty devastating. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's that's. Yeah, that's devastating. Yeah, it was, but as, like, difficult as that was, I think it's really, in a certain sense, like, made me bulletproof because, like, I've been through that, so I don't think that a lot of stuff could really impact me because I really, like, not only did I, like, survive that, but I really feel like it taught me a lot, and I think that, like, it plays a big part in how, like, I treat people and, like, also how I really like to make the person in my chair feel seen and heard and special. And, like, I really try to make a point to, like, make sure that I'm, like, very accommodating and, like, sensitive to all different types of things. So, And, and did, did you – was your parents, like, you know, understanding or were they, like, a at little – At the time, they were – not super understanding um so that was difficult but in the same regards like they had never met another gay person and then I think about like when they grew up there was a whole like AIDS and everything like that so um they are very very supportive now my whole family is very supportive um well you know the the thing is and and, you know um as a parent you know I, I think that whether you're supportive of lifestyle or not, if we're not talking about lifestyle, but there's still like a there's still a processing period, right? Absolutely. You know, you know, because there's no way that you have kids, there's no way that you raise someone, and you don't have your own dreams for them, right? You know, so now and whatever fair, not fair, whatever, it, it's just it's just what being a parent is, right? You know, and you yeah. try to situate, you know, you try to raise them with the best that you know how, you know, so exactly. when so when so when there's a big like. Uh, discovery I, I don't know I don't have another word for it, but yeah. when there's a big discovery for that it does take time to process that doesn't mean you love them any less or that doesn't exactly. mean that, that that you don't support whatever like I hate saying lifestyle because that sounds like it's it, it comes and goes but whatever that lifestyle is like it, it, you just you need that time too and, and and I think it's important too that we understand that that everybody needs their own processing time just like you need your own processing but time. on the parent on the parent um, talking about the parents right now is like a lot of times when we have conversations about people who want to be hairdressers or barbers, and and the parents struggle with that decision. And it's right. like, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. care if you're gay, but are you really going to be? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's so wild about that is at one point I remember I think it was like right after I had won Naha, my dad was like, you know, that first when you said that you were going to do hair, and then you know, or at first, you know, when you said you were gay and then like you said you were going to do hair, we thought we were going to have to take care of you for the rest of your life. <laughs> and now look at you. And now I'm look like, at you. wow, thanks for believing in me, <laughs> you know, but it's interesting because I remember actually in high school, like, of course, I was like upset at their reaction, you know, like you're angsty. But I remember my dad saying to me, like, it doesn't matter like what like the other child is like, like every child is like a different experience. And like, we've never been through this before. And it was like, I was able to, in that moment, completely be able to like move forward and forgive and also like understand and sympathize with that as well. And so I think like, it's just a matter of like perspective and stuff over time. Cause I can't imagine, like, I think it was more or less, they just knew that my life would be difficult. And that was difficult for them because they wanted to like protect me and especially like me being the baby and sure. you know so it was more out of anything like just them wanting to like protect me and it sounds like you have safe. a pretty awesome family yeah they're pretty awesome yeah. i'm very lucky yeah. how'd, how'd your sisters react um 
a little standoffish at first. I think just shock. Um, but like I, my sister, I give her a hard time about this because I remember I was like, I had to have been like 12 and I, she had friends over and they were like laying out tanning and I wasn't even like actually checking them out, but I <laughs> was playing street hockey, of course. And I had like a backwards hat and like a dark wing duck, like fanny pack on, like it was a serious look. And I just have to imagine what I was looking like standing there, but I was like staring and my sister goes, what are you doing? And I was like, hanging out and she's like you're gonna be gay when you grow up <laughs> and then like I brought that up to her now and she's like that's really sad Whitney like she feels bad about it I'm like no it's hilarious like it's probably your fault honestly like <laughs> that's, your, yeah. that's, your, that's your next tattoo by the way you're gonna yeah. be gay when you grow, yeah, grow yeah. up yeah <laughs> yeah so it's actually like super funny and like I don't know they're they're super great they're super supportive they always like they have a great relationship with my partner and stuff as well so Oh, yeah, that's no awesome. complaints. Yeah, were you kind of sporty? I was. I was a basketball player. So before it was like before, hair, it was before, basketball. Before Caitlin, you were you were yes. you were the Caitlin. <sighs> uh, my parents are obsessed with Caitlin, by the way, because we're from Iowa. Who's not? You know, I know she's incredible. Well, well I mean, there's n literally nothing else ever from Iowa. So yeah. Caitlin's like a good like yeah. you know like yeah, like God. pin on the map. Yeah, exactly. Except Jamie Wiley, she's from Iowa, right? Or uh -huh. she lives there now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I I mean like. It's just, yeah, I, I grew up playing basketball. I played a bunch of different sports, but specifically basketball was the thing. So I feel like I, so I, I played basketball forever and I actually didn't go out my senior year for basketball because like once I come out and stuff, they like wouldn't want me to change in the same locker rooms as my teammates and stuff like that because it was just like super religious. So because of that, I just decided I wasn't gonna play anymore and it, kind of broke my heart and I mourned it I think for a long time and I think like when I found hair it took the place of that you know so. hopefully they sucked that year yeah well <laughs> they, we kind of always suck to be honest but yeah Whoa. yeah that was disappointing but I feel my heart I, I, got, <laughs> I got a little emotional I'm not gonna lie man yeah it was you know? it was super difficult like I mean, what's what's worse than being forced out of the closet is to be like forced out of your love yeah it was wild mm -hmm. it was super wild sometimes I like it's like hard to believe that it's the same life, you know? And I think that's why it's so important for me to like be very visible, you know, as a gay person um, in this industry, like especially like being more in the barbering arena, like as like a female slash like non-binary individual, I think it's like very important to like have that visibility because like I never would have guessed that I would get messages from people. Like I had a mom reach out to me and say that like her daughter came out and that she's really proud that she has strong role models and people like me out there. And that was like, that's the whole reason why I do anything is because I like to make the people in my chair feel good. But like, I like to also like promote other people's work or make them feel seen. Anything that I can do to help like promote that, I think that's why I'm here. That's incredible. So. Bravo, friend. Thank you. Bravo. Yeah. Thank you. So, all right, now we'll go back again. So, um, because so I was visiting. You know, her telling mom and dad, hey, I'm going to go to hair school, and the look on their face, and grandma behind them, like. <laughs> oh, this is the same grandma that when I wanted to get my nose pierced, my parents said no, and she was like, if you don't take her, I'm going to take her, and then I'm also going to get my nose pierced. <laughs> and they were like, okay, fine, we'll take her. So So whose mom is she? Your mom? My mom's mom. Right. Yeah. Dude, how cool is it that you had, like, a grandma advocate? I know. She was really cool. Both of my grandmas still were with amazing. Us? No, they're no longer with us, but... Oh, oh, okay, Did now I'll slow the story down a little bit. Like, yeah. was she around for Naha? Was she around for the great successes? No, unfortunately, she passed away while I was in hair school. But um, I still, like, you know, I I had a have a ring from her that was, like, her um, wedding ring. And, like, I wore that, like, on stage when I won Naha and things like that. Because I like to try to, like, tie things to her and, like... I think about like I don't think she would have any idea that this is what my life would end up being so it's an honor to be able to do the things that I do and also like bring her along with me so that's yeah that's what a tribute man <laughs> wow, grandparents really cool. are the best they really are yeah, yeah absolutely. you didn't meet mine they weren't so good <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a great grandmother yeah, but yeah, no, I met her. She was yeah. cool. I liked her. You should share her, honestly. Yeah, we, we, we could. Yeah. We could do. Yeah. We, yeah. we actually grew up together. Oh, that's cool. So we've known each other since high school. 
Yeah, we were best friends since high school. That's awesome. I don't know about best friends, but we were friends since high school. <laughs> I, I always said my best. <laughs> yeah, he always leaves me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, no, I, you're just so cold, man. <laughs> so how did you know, like, you go to Minneapolis and, like, you, you know, you're starting to fade up the hair and stuff. How did you know, like, I, I know how to do this? So... I had my mentor at the time, he had um, a spot and I drove past it and I thought it looked cool, but then I like looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, like I kind of get what's going on there. So I decided one day that I was going to just go in there and drop off a resume and they were in the middle of like the hiring process, but he specifically loved to hire people straight out of school because he could mold them. But I had been in the industry already for like five, six years. I was booth rental like before I had like moved to Minneapolis so I had as a barber or as a stylist as a stylist yeah and I did color and everything at that time um but I remember I ended up getting a call for an interview and he handed me a DVD of like a haircut that he did and he was like come back and do this fade for me and so I had never faded without guards before I didn't know any guys in Minneapolis because I had just moved there also very gay, so I don't have, I didn't have like a whole Rolodex of dudes that I could hit up. <laughs> and so a, a friend of mine like I found. I mean, the gay clubs, you would have found a couple. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they probably would have been like, no, girl, you're not yeah, touching yeah. my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I ended up like getting someone to come in and I just took the clipper to the scalp and I did it and actually like turned out pretty good. And I remember we went back to his office and he was like, okay, we still got, like, a couple more people we're going to interview. Um, we'll let you know kind of a thing. And I just kind of, like, cut him off, and I was like, I know that I've been doing hair for a while, but, like, because of that, I know what I want, and I promise you that if you hire me, no one's going to work their ass off for you like I will. And he was like, I never do this, and I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to hire you on the spot today. And I remember I went out to my car, and I sat in my car and cried because I knew it was going to change my life. And, like, from that moment, I never looked back. Did, well, where did the creativity come from? Because, I mean, you're so creative. Oh, thank you. Um, I think just... Did you draw, paint? Did you... I don't know. I, I feel like I was, always, like I was always playing with critters. <laughs> like, I always had, like, some sort of, like, animal in my pocket up here. Um, I would be, like, riding around on a horse with, like, my, like, little... Um, puppy like on my lap like I was always with animals and stuff like that but I feel like honestly like watching a lot of TV because I was out in the middle of nowhere but like even like back in the day remember like MTV had that like making of the video mm. like and I loved watching like the behind the scenes and like seeing how like things were made stuff, yeah. yeah I always like really appreciated that stuff and I always was into like poetry and writing and things like that but it's interesting because even when I did start Barbering. I remember when I did my first Naha collection, it was, like, really hard for me to not do perfect hair, to, like, actually let myself, like, break the rules to make, like, more, like, avant-garde, like, editorial work. It was so hard for me to not, like, stick between, like, all of those lines. And then once I did that, I was like, okay, well, now I only want to do that, you know? So, I don't know. I think it's just over time, I just found myself in it. It was kind of therapeutic for me like growing up I'd Did wake up in the middle of the night and go outside and like shoot hoops and so now it's like I am just constantly like sourcing inspiration oh. all the wake time. Wake up in the middle of the night grab a pair of clippers and start Yeah fighting. I mean <laughs> might as well I uh I have like a work live space so like I could actually do that kind of stuff but oh, that's cool yeah it's more or less like building like different things for like editorial stuff or just like, I love, like, coming up with the concepts and stuff. That's why I, like, consider myself more of a creative director. Like, I happen to cut hair, and hair is, like, my medium today. But I'm always open to it changing, because I think, like, if you're a creative, like, you kind of can, like, do all these different things. Like, we have this ability to, like, transition and ebb and flow out of, like, different creative industries. But I think, like, your medium can change if you're open to it. And so, like, I always try to think, like, I don't just stick to, like, the hair industry for inspiration. In fact, like, I rarely look at hair for inspiration. I look at, like, architecture, um, cinematography, fashion, music. Like, I feel like that stuff kind of gets me a little bit more a lot of the time because I just feel like my feet is, like, 
obviously just tons and tons of hair, which is great, but I also am not trying to like be unintentionally inspired by someone's work and recreate it or something like that, you know? So I try to not overly immerse myself in it. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if your inspiration came only from the hair industry, then it would look only like the hair industry. Yeah, and you know? I like to yeah. make weird stuff, you know? Right. I like unique people. Like I, I like, I always like when I do a collection or something, I start with like the concept to the wardrobe to the model. And the hair is the absolute last thing that I think about because if I don't put the right shape on the right face shape, bone structure, it means nothing, you know? So it's always tailored down to the, like, person that I'm inspired by, and I kind of build it around them. That makes sense. I mean, it, it prob and I'll speak for you, and correct me if I misspeak for you, but um, the hair is what you're confident about. Oh, yeah. I know I can do that. Exactly. You know, it's all this other stuff that I have to work out before I get to that. Exactly. Even today, like I, the model that I have, I was wanting to like take it down to the skin and do all the stuff. Well, obviously they're like a signed model and they have like a bigger gig coming up that they can't have their hair that short. And it's, that's why I didn't overly obsess over the concept because I'm never going to try to make the hair do something it doesn't want to do because mm -hmm. then you're just going to be frustrated. So I like went in with like a bunch of ideas and I'm, I'll just figure it out as I go. I like, I just let it speak to me. That's how I like to try to do that kind of stuff because if you try to force it and you're like so zoned in on this concept and this idea it often doesn't end up working out so and back to what you're saying earlier the about you know uh, wanting to be in a position that that people are being seen well that also includes your model that also includes a person that's sitting in front of you whether you know they're a paid model or not so, absolutely you know. and I always make it a point too like I I can't tell you I'm sure you guys see this at so many hair shows where you get someone up there that just wants to get up there and show off and they're just doing like crazy hair on that model and then you're like oh my god that poor model <laughs> well listen let me tell you we came up in the early 90s where that's all you ever saw yeah on stage. Yep. right you know there was there was the famous i kind of hope that they're not alive anymore so that never comes back to bite me but right. there was the famous arturi brothers from matrix and all they did was slaughter hair you know yeah, like blow dry like a slaughter. party <laughs> yeah. uh yes uh, they are still around are they still slaughtering hair they're still calling it and i quote the greatest show on earth. So, I just want you to know that that well, it's, it's, gonna sti come it's back still to bite the now. greatest. Just want you guys to know. That's awesome. still the greatest show on earth. Yeah, that is Period. awesome. Wow, re but they're really still around. Uh, yep. Where do you see them? I've seen them at a hair show. <laughs> Who brought? Oh, never mind. I'll fill you in. On yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, have yeah, to be yeah. an off the air yeah, conversation. Yeah, exactly. Really? But yeah, I just think like if you. See, like, I always feel like when people do that, like, you're educating for the wrong reasons, and you're just getting well, up you're there not to educating. show off. Yeah, and then that's not usable stuff. And then I, no matter what, like, that model's a person, and I never want them to leave. Like, even if I do do something, like, super blunt, I'm going to soften it before they leave because I want them to be able to wear their hair. And I feel like if you do exceptional work, you don't have to do all the platform stuff where you're, like, acting like you're making hair fly like just do really good work and i think like a lot of educators do get into it for the ego for themselves and i think if you just like focus on it and like you keep that mindset you're going to be successful you know and you're going to actually be able to impact people for like the right reasons and that's long-term success versus short success of that like influencer like I'm just trying to make hair fly kind of a thing. I mean, my perspective is a little bit different, but I think it's also, again, we, we came up going to hair shows in the 90s yeah. where that was that was it. I mean, I'm actually really happy to see where the industry currently is. And it, there seems to, and now, you know, granted, when we talked last week, like we work with Presley and we work th with yes. these really great educators. Um, and so I think that, um, I think the industry is kind of, I don't know back because I don't know if it was ever back, but for the lack of a better word, kind of back to like let's get down not to basics, but l let's teach you how yes. to do hair and not and not how to you know create a show. Yeah, yeah, but, right. but, but I also but we don't like the shows though because I remember Robert Labetta and all those guys extra when we went there and it was like a I think it's two different it was like things a circus, so, right? yeah. but it was still we were attracted to the circus. There's I mean there's no doubt, but but also Tony, I would also argue that there was no other show. 
Right, that was the only kind of shows that were out there. So, like, right. if you wanted to be, if you wanted to enjoy the hairdressing world as the world, the only thing that we were seeing was was these the, these super avant garde kind of like ego driven driven looks. And I think where we are now, I, th- I think that there's a lot more care and uh, about. I also think, and I think that this is a big factor, is that more so than in my entire career, we are hairdresser driven and not product line driven. Mm. And because the product line, their job is to bring butts to the booth. So yes. let's slay some hair. Yes. You know, and I think I think I think a shift happened a few years ago and I think it's happened a second time, um, post the thing we never talk about. I, I think that we're 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 looking for hairdressers that we can relate to and we're looking for hairdressers that that, that are teaching usable stuff. Yes. And it's not about necessarily bringing as many, you know, like you know what we did last week and this this we had a great show. We had Presley Poe and Friends last week. We had a great show and w- what I'm most proud of, we didn't have one house or rap song. It was all ethereal piano music. Oh, that's cool. And we that's kept really the room. Cool. I love it. We kept the room. You yeah. know, we, we, we uh, I don't know if you saw the opening, but Ira was behind a, a, a curtain and we just, yes. we just, we just so blew cool. him up and we were like, and we were backstage because we, we, we had to like follow Ira. That's impossible to do, right? Yeah. But we, <laughs> we were backstage and what we were fearful of is that, if they if the audience didn't buy in, we lose the whole night in a second. Yes. Right. Yeah. And you also couldn't yell at them. Shut up. You know that yeah. wasn't going to work in that situation yeah. either. So when we were, I started crying actually. When we were backstage and the music started, and you could hear a pin drop, we got them. Yeah. We got them. You know, and 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 um, that's what I've wanted to do for years. I wanted to like let's bring the music the other. You can't do it in this environment, yeah. obviously. But we don't need that. We don't. We don't need that all the time. You know, we, we can have an experience. I totally agree, and I think like that's the thing is people want like a more immersive experience and stuff now. I think which is like it's so hard to grab people's attention, and so like you have to fully like envelope them, like bring them in. And I think doing something like that that's different, it's like one of those moments that like stops people and they're like, wait, this is different. And I think that that's really that's really cool and really powerful. What's going to happen next? Oh man, what is going to happen next? Well, no, with when, when you when you <laughs> slow it down. Yeah. This is the thought. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this is a different experience. What's going to happen next? I've got to I've got to I've got to stay tuned. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But as bad as social media can be, social media really has brought hairdressing to the point where it is today because before you saying in the 90s where the brands they they're they're focused to sell products, right? So they're going to put on the show so they can sell products. Yeah. Today, social media has brought people like you to where we can see quality work, and that's what we want. Now, that's what we're drawn to. Now, when we come see you, that's what we want to see, right. and we're going to get that quality work. Yeah. And I think it's changed so much because of social media, because now it's in our grasp. Mm. I, I agree, and I think, like, what's so cool about it is, like, you can go anywhere in the world, and, like, there are so many different cultures that have, like, really beautiful traditions around hair. Like, when I lived in South Dakota for a while, there, I remember this um, Native American boy had come in, and his hair was, like, very long, and we braided it, and we cut it because when his first grandparent passed away, they cut the hair off, and they bury it with the grandparent, and I was like, that's so wow. beautiful yeah you know like there's just so many cool things around that and it's like as different as all of our languages are like we all speak the same language like we all do this for the same reason like if you are in it for the right reasons you know like it is it's interesting i i cut hair in tokyo and we don't speak the same language but yet we do and we can cut hair together and it's it's the same in a lot of ways, and I think that's really, it's really cool that we can connect like that. So yeah. I love that. I mean, there's so many people that I've been friends with online for, like, a decade, and then you just meet them for the first time at a hair show. That, so uh, yeah, Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's only, what's cool about that, too, though, um, to your point, Tony, what, what's really cool about that is, like, you kind of know the person. Oh, absolutely! Like, like, like it's we, we we no longer greet with handshakes. We greet with uh with, with hugs. Yes, you know, yes. which is really cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, the new pen pal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so cool. Yeah, when we were in New York, we met Dawn Dawn Bradley for the first time, and like, I've probably had twenty hours of conversation with her. Yeah. That's you crazy. Know? And then like you're in the room. on the podcast through Zoom, and yep. we've had many of conversations. 
it's so I know it's so it's, it's crazy and then you're like I've seen you over Zoom but like in real life it's like it doesn't feel like I'm just meeting you for the first time like it it does feel like very real and authentic because you're able to like also like on their social media people like include things with their personal life you really do feel like you know more about them you know like about mm -hmm. we were talking about Kurt and you know like Shout out he to would Curtis. mention yeah. Curtis, Curtis RIP um about my dog and stuff like that and I just think like that's really it's really cool how we can connect like that so so w when did you see yourself like s starting to like elevate and then and start working with uh you know, brands or just start winning competition. I mean, I yeah. Um, so I had actually like been working under my mentor, and I remember I was like, we were at the salon, and I remember we were going to do a salon collection for Naha, and there was going to be two male models, and I had gotten one of them, and so I came up with this concept and all of this stuff and then um right before the shoot my mentor decided that he wanted to take the model and do the hair so i got kind of cut out so then i ended up just like holding bobby pins for everyone else and i remember like she doesn't look salty at all yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> well honestly it actually drove me a lot because i remember like him and i were talking and like i just thought uh, also like being conditioned as a female and then also like Midwestern. I just thought like, I will pay my dues. I'm going to be nice and respectful and like the opportunity will just come for me. And I remember him saying like, I feel like you're just waiting for something to happen for you. And I was so offended by that because I felt like, can't you see that like I bleed for this? You know, like, like when is my time going to happen? And I, at that moment, I started like raising my hand and being like, no, I want this opportunity. And it was one of those things that, like, after he did that, it lit such a fire under my ass. And um, after that, I just started saying, like, yes to things or that I could do them. And then I was like, okay, well, I got to rise to the occasion, you know, <laughs> because I already said I could do it. So, um, yeah, I think that probably started happening around, like, 2015, 2016. And I created a Naha collection and then my second one that I created got nominated and then I didn't win and then I won the next year and then I with the same collection I won um behind the chair and that kind of just snowballed were you still working with your mentor then no no nope. I decided um that I was going to go work at the better salon and I decided I was gonna have higher haircut prices and then I I it, the, I'll be honest, the spite drove me originally at, at first, but um, I think that was because actually we were like so much alike, you know, and I have so much respect for everything that he's taught me because it changed my life. Um, but it wasn't until like that kind of stuff happened. I think that it had to happen for me to um, step into like to who fly. I was supposed to be. Yeah. Did you let Stuck him hold your trophy? Yeah. What's that? Did you let him hold your trophy? You know, <laughs> no, but I mean... You, you can at least feel what one feels like. <laughs> and I do, so, yeah. Do you guys it have a relationship now? Um, Like, we're, we're very co cordial, but, like, I mean, we don't really cross paths anymore because I also would totally be the person if he was like, oh, I want to do this thing. I would totally just be like, oh, I'll totally do it, you know, kind of a thing. And then it would be easy for me to get lost in that. So I just feel like for my own yeah. sake, I just stay my own course, so. Good for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's been an interesting ride, but it's been pretty incredible. I know he's got to be following you and be like, damn it. You know, I know. Damn it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, he's not. You know what he's saying. That's why I couldn't have her do that haircut. Oh, probably. <laughs> no, nah, he's probably telling. I talk about. Yeah, I told everything she knows. Yeah, yeah, and he's not wrong. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, definitely opened my eyes in a whole new world. And it's so funny because our birthdays are actually like a day apart. And I'm like, we're so much alike. That's probably. When's your birthday? August twenty first. He's August twentieth. So we're like very similar we're in that regard. First. Yeah. There you go. Yep. What um, it's it, it, Minneapolis is very interesting to me. There's these little pockets, right? There's Indianapolis. There's Kansas City. There's Jacksonville, Florida. Not exactly like hairdresser 
we would think is like hairdresser like beds. You know, it's not like yeah. L.A. or New York or something. Man, there's some killers in these cities. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I remember the year Denver that I won team. Naha, we had eight finalists from Minneapolis. <sighs> there's a lot of incredible hairdressers in that city. So, um, uh, you think you think a lot of that is attributed to Horst? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Horst. Like, and then you know, just like everything that Avita's like kept up with has been like very incredible. I actually live super close to there. Um, and there's also a couple other companies that are in Minneapolis. So and I from think Matt's there. Matt Sweeney's there. Yes, Matt's yeah, and amazing. And he's just Mark Dolan's amazing. Mark Dolan's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, used to cut my hair before. Mark did. Yep. Before I have my partner, and I'll cut it because it would be wrong to not get my hair cut by her. So sorry, Mark. Well, I mean, if you want a good haircut. Yeah. Though, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone that works there is like incredible. They, I think, the year that I won Naha, they also won Salon Team of the Year. So it was pretty cool. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I guess that's the Minneapolis uh, connection there that yeah, was there that year. Exactly, exactly. It, isn't it interesting, though, that, 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 that there are these pockets? And, and, I mean, Minneapolis makes sense. I, can't, I don't know if Kansas City makes sense to me. And Jacksonville doesn't make sense. I mean, Sam lives there, but you know, he doesn't really participate in all that stuff. But is it a salon that does it? Is it is it an environment that does it? You know, like, it's just, it's very interesting to me but, how, how we get these, like, strong pockets. Outside of Sam, though, that, like, Jacksonville, I mean... It's, it's Sage, right? I mean, Sage Studios, yeah. I mean, Erica's there and, and Sarah Jane and yeah. Darina, the photographer, who is, like, extraordinary. Yep. I like, think a lot of it is, is actually, like, because I noticed this when I was, like, building my business, is because people, like, in that city, like, it's considered, like, a flyover city. There's this really incredible community of like creatives that it's like we want to see you make it and we'll all like do our part to like assist you in that and it's like very authentic it's not like oh yeah we should do something together sometime it's like it's legitimate it's true like and I will say like my whole creative team is generally like people from my city that I've worked with for forever because we all just kind of have the same like we're all in it for the same reasons. It's for the art, like, no ego and stuff like that. And everyone's willing to, like, do their part and also, like, step into the stuff that's not their part, you know, right. as well. So I think there's something to be said about, like, that, like, Like lifting each other pride. up kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and, like, like okay, like, this isn't just a flyover city. Like, yep. cool stuff does happen here. And Shit's happening here. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because, like, I, people ask me all the time, like, why I live there. And I'm like, because the people are really nice. And it's really clean, and because I can fly to both coasts, like super. Well, I was gonna easy. say, I was gonna say, um, it's if, if you're a traveling artist, it's great. You know, like yeah. Denver's great, or Kansas City's great, Minneapolis is great because yeah, you, you're like we're not one plane ride away from you know anywhere really, and we're in yeah. DC. You like, and we're in like a, a major you know airport hub. Yeah. But you know, we always to go to Montana, we always have to fly through Minneapolis. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Or Salt Lake City, but that's a whole other story because we almost crashed and died in Salt Lake City, so we try to avoid that. All right. <laughs> no <Salt Lake> City. <laughs> <laughs> that's another well, that, well that's another city that has some some um great work that's happening there you know in salt lake yes. city in a great city by the way i'm just kidding about the airport but <laughs> i love i love utah if my wife would move to utah i think i would but she's yeah. like i'm not moving to utah bro i get it i get it i mean i just think it's cool that there's like so many incredible artists and in so many like different mm. cities it's not just like so obvious anymore mm. and i think it's because you're also not like overly saturated with I mean we have a lot of hairdressers in my city but I don't know like it's just it's not like overly like an obvious like industry to be in you mm-hmm. know what I mean like it's not like oh well of course this you know like in LA like I love LA but like yeah. everyone does hair and makeup there you know so I think there's like some Well there's industry to that. support that right like Minneapolis yeah, there's exactly. no industry to support yeah, no. that Exactly. Right. New York's the same, right? There's industry to support that. Yes. You know, but yes. um, th- I mean that too is about social, like social. Kind New York. Of yep. Do you ever do Fashion Week? I haven't done Fashion Week. Um, I had some opportunities to, but I haven't done it. But I would love to for the right designer. I would love to. Like a dream would be to do hair for like Rick Owens because his stuff is so avant garde, but like very conceptual and um, very like utilitarian and. I think our vibes are very similar. That would be a dream for me. So I would love to do that someday. 
so we'll see. What are you working on now? Oh, man. I am currently working on, um, I just recently built some new curriculum that I am going to develop into a little bit more of a series. It's it's haircutting curriculum, but it's actually more um, art and design based. So, like, the first half of the day is, like, we don't even really talk about cutting hair. It's more about, like, actually, like, learning how to, like, redefine your design eye. So, like, mm. instead of, like, doing a class on a weekend and then somebody travels to it and by the time they get home, they've forgotten it. What I like to do is I like to immerse them in understanding design and design choices like even within like the space and pulling out certain things like why the space feels good because of the balance and things like that and that like activates that for them like immediately so then they can start using it and it's kind of like if somebody you know has like a red I don't know Prius Mm -hmm. like you see them everywhere right so it's like it's like about them getting that muscle memory and activating that immediately and then being able to um, utilize that into actually being able to see face shape and bone structure 360 a little bit better. So I like to do um, more like design theory stuff and I think over time I will turn that into more of like an immersive like workshop um, type of experience with like how to find inspiration to how to like execute a photo shoot. So not just even like composition of a haircut for face shape but also like how to properly like crop a photo Mm -hmm. like how the light needs to hit a certain area how like the wardrobe is like just as important as the hair and how like you know you could have a shirt that will make the haircut look so much better because like the lines are parallel and it just like makes the photo so much stronger things like that do you think a cosmetology background uh helps you more with that eye or not at all i think so Yeah, because I I think, um, especially because there's, uh, in the barbering um, industry, there's there's such a hole between the two, right? Like, they generally say, like, hairdressers are good from, like, here up. Barbers are good from here down, which I don't think is the case anymore. Um, You don't think barbers are good from here down? I think they're great. At doing everything, especially <laughs> now, like everybody's like learning. Barbering, a lot of barbering's where it's at right now. I mean, yeah. it, 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 we just had Lois at our show. I mean, like, yes, uh, uh, he's next yeah. level. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's just really cool that like the two industries, like there, there is becoming like more of this like hybrid, like crossover, mm-hmm. right? But there yeah. still is like a little bit of a hole in the industry and like kind of melding the two together. So um, a lot of people just like to especially like as a cosmetologist the background is generally like face shapes like you know round square like all of this but that's only like the front right like we're not only just viewing the haircut from the front all the time it's like a 360 good point and how to like execute like a technically excellent haircut but how to like tailor it so like it all looks like it's the same length because of the seamlessness of the fade however because the bone structure dips in, like I'm going to get those little shadows out so that it looks seamless, but it's actually all different lengths, but it's the most tailored specific haircut that that person can have for them. That's, and you you said the hybrid. So you have your barbers and you have your hairdressers and, you know, and, and I love both, but the hybrid that creates the, you know, the, the the, the mullets, the the picks, these short picks, these, yeah. these long extent, these under, it's just, that's my favorite yeah. part of the industry right now. Yeah, it's I agree. It's so, yeah, it's so special. I think it's cool to see, like, a lot of people that got into barbering and, like, kind of had this very structured idea of it actually make their way into that a little bit more. Like, they mm-hmm. want to know about sectioning, like, things that they didn't learn in barber school and stuff like that, and I think, like, it's cool to see them them excited about it and then also them share that knowledge with hairdressers who are like terrified to use like a clipper so I think it's like really cool because it's like hey I'm vulnerable there's this thing I'm not good at and then vice versa and then like let's come together and like figure it out yeah I mean I I've, even this week I had several of my clients who you know that have short pixies that allowed me to move into clipper work you know what I mean and and, and it's just it's it's awesome that just 
people are, are just able to experience different things now and, and, you know, not labeling it, oh, it, it's a clipper, it's too masculine for me, or it's, right. you know what I mean, it's, yeah. right. uh, it's too soft for me. It's just people are starting to drop these labels and, and allowing to just be a little bit more creative. Yeah, and, that, like, that's how it should be, right? Like, I always say, like, honestly, I want to do a collection with a flow bee because I just want to, like, prove a point <laughs> that, like, <laughs> you can still make badass hair with a flow bee, right? Like, I don't know, I just think, like, it doesn't really matter you better what do that. Yeah. whether it works out or not. It'll you gotta happen. post it, even okay, if, even well. if it fails. You yeah, gotta yeah. post yeah, it. Yeah, you were saying it. that yeah. you you know you you only post the stuff this that you're most proud of. This is it. Yeah. Okay, this, this is it. Is it. <laughs> this okay, is cool. it. All right, check. Got I it. Like this. Yeah, you know, but awesome. even even to that point, this weekend, Babelis has both barbers and hairstylists up on stage together for the first time ever, Love which it. blows me away a little bit. But you know, they've also like they've they've created this like space where like everybody's welcome whether you're a stylist yes. or whether you're and i mean even our friend olivia is there who's a s- social media expert you know like they're That's creating cool. space for like all all hairdressing not just the tools that you that, that, that you hold in your hands yeah I love, like, I love that about their brand, too. Yeah. And I think, like, that's something that, like, Sophie specifically is, like, very much, like, pioneered and, like, makes a a point to focus on. And, like, that's one of the things that her and I have definitely bonded over. And, I mean, she's incredible and she's an inspiration for me as well. Dude, she is, she's incredible. She's awesome. What I love is that, I mean, we've had plenty of just badass female barbers. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Just, just. Taking it to the next level and and forcing this hybrid situation, I, I believe it, yeah. I, it, and I'm all for it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's so Under cool two. to see. Like, it's, I don't know, like, I do feel like there is, I also am, like, realistic in the regard that, like, yeah, I also did get into, like, this niche thing at the right time. Like, I didn't pick it because of that. I picked it because I loved it, you know, and, like. Just the, the timing worked out. Yeah, but I'm also, like, realistic about that, like, that was a part of it, but I think. I do feel like it's been really, I feel like really honored to have been like this little tiny like pie of the industry that we've seen grow so much and become so different. It's just been incredible to see. Because I remember like when I first started doing it, people would be like, what's it like to be a woman in a man's world? And I always hated that question because I'm like, Mm -hmm. the guys that I work with don't make me feel that way. So what about your clients though? They're awesome. Yeah. They're all the best. Like, I wouldn't be the person that I am without them. Like, they they truly inspire me. Like, I have, I get to listen to music and cut hair and hang out with my friends and have really cool, interesting conversations all day. And I've gotten so much, like, incredible advice, whether it's, like, on business stuff or AI or dog yeah. stuff like who knows <laughs> you know what i mean or like restaurants you know it's just like that's the beauty of our our, our industry. having a client yeah, t- yeah. you yeah. know we like we have clients that that writes our business uh our oh, llc's yes. and stuff yes. like that you know like yeah. we love a trade yeah, yeah. for sure we love, love it. a trade you know yeah. it, um where tony and i work we um we our, our salon is like two blocks south of like the national institution of health and that matters because um the zip code that we work in are the um, are the highest educated women in the world? So, wow. so if you break that down, what that means is there's more graduate degrees held by women in this zip code than any place else in the world, and that's wow. where our salon is. And and we're the opposite of that, right? Like like now we've had we've been able to have like I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna get roasted for it, but but we're we're <laughs> able to kind of like have like conversations with these women who are absolutely brilliant and like all mansplaining, all man ego and stuff like has no room here. Right. Yeah. I know you're smarter than me. I know you've accomplished a lot in your life, you know, and like and, and, and certainly for for me and as a guy, like like there's something positively humbling about that, too, you know, because I've kind of had to like work through like what is misogyny? What is all these things? All that and conditioning. That all that you, stuff. Yeah, because we all have it. We all have yeah. this like conditioning aspect of it. But I think like that's cool because like also like the traditional like barber aspect like you as much as they've given that to you you've also given that back to them so much like it's completely cool how that can happen that way who do you are there any accounts on instagram that you're following that are like way where who inspires you oh man um i rick owens he's incredible um fashion designer i i've been following like a lot of really incredible like ai artists lately um actually like for social art house we have 
a gorgeous presentation tomorrow and it, it is a lot of like that kind of like more ethereal music and it is basically a, the whole theme about it is essentially how like technology like we shouldn't be scared of it and we should embrace it and how it can be used to like find inspiration and we found this AI artist um, on Instagram and I had been like sharing his work and stuff for a while and he's just so incredibly talented of creating this like hauntingly beautiful work it's unreal I can I can look up his Instagram and let me just double check that's really cool. I don't cool. want to just say his Instagram name, but you know, I think I think my my relationship with AI is the same as social media in the sense that I think eighty percent of it is going to be awesome. However, yeah. I think that like you know, ten or twenty percent of it can be pretty scary, and I think we're going to get into that. You yeah, know? for sure. There's definitely a combination, right? Like, there's definitely there's some elements that can be scary, right? But I think like that's the thing right now is instead of running from it is like this is the time to run towards it and understand and it. understand it so that you can use it as an asset so that if you need to pivot something in the future you're able to do so because you know it's only going to get smarter as we go that's amazing mm-hmm. hey what as we wrap up here uh how can people find you instagram um <laughs> <laughs> i'm not on tiktok no tiktok uh, no tiktok for me i probably should have but then by the time we got out there i was like it's too late um so I'm not on there, but I am on Instagram at Whitney Vermeer. Um, As one word. Whitney Vermeer. Not Vermeer. 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 Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then I, I'm, I'm just around at the shows and doing random stuff for Social Art House. You can find me on there as well. Um, but yeah. She does kind of live in a bat cave, though, because, you know, we've been, <laughs> in, we've been in the same room for a thousand times. And yeah. This is yeah. the first time that we've, we've IRL'd as yes. well. It's I'm probably incognito. Been. I'm sneaking around. Yeah. She's in black. Just find the girl that's in all black, <laughs> yeah, and that's, yes. that's Whitney. Yes. Uh, this has been a quick hour. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been incredible. That flew yeah. by. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Such a great conversation. You do a lot for the industry. Trust me. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. I mm-hmm. really appreciate that. And you guys as well. Uh, thank you. I mean, that was, like, lame, but, you know, thank you. No, it is true. Like, you guys always have, like, very diverse people on your podcast, you know? Like, you guys have a lot of, like, different people, and I don't know. I I don't see that a lot. Like, there's a lot of different outlets that just work with just the same people over and over and over again, and I just think that that's... I mean, we like having conversations. That's lame. That's lame. (laughs) That's so lame. You're lame. <laughs> Whitney Vermeer. Ver- 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 Come on, Corey. <laughs> you know what uh. he'll do? Before we get on, he'll start throwing around, throw, when, like on a Zoom call, yeah. he'll throw around like other vowels. So like it screws me up with everybody's oh, names. Yeah. And like, and then he gets that, see that face, see that giggles? <laughs> he gets the giggles. Whitney, I'm not going to attempt it again. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging Thank out you. with us. Thank you for bringing your girlfriend and um, having her join the table. Although we wouldn't give her a mic. Whitney said you can't give her a mic, but she can listen in. She'll take over, on. Honestly. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Whitney, thank you very, very much. And thank you for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.